Hey Hatchlings, it's Dragonfeather and welcome back to the channel and on today's episode we will be covering Tiny Craft or the rediscovering and application of the inner child magic. The magic of your inner child. The childlike wonder in your witchcraft or practice or life because it doesn't have to be witchcraft but in this case it is. Hey hi, if you're new here, marry me. My name is Azura. I post new videos every week and they're magical so don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and ring the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Hopefully. Ding. You read that right. When I'm talking about tiny craft, no, I am not talking about the BDSM community. I am talking about using your inner child in your practice because there's a lot of wisdom to be found in your inner child, isn't there now? This whole entire practice was really cultivated by name, if you will, within the Hatchling clan. This is in no way created by the Hatchlings, absolutely not. Everybody does this probably without realizing it, which is why I wanted to make a video to bring awareness to this type of craft and to help normalize these practices within the witchy magical community, if you will. But also to normalize within the spiritual and religious community because newsflash, all practices and all faiths are valid. It don't matter who you think you are or who you think somebody else is. It's all right. It's just all right. Unless it's hurting or affecting somebody else's rights, then it's wrong. Thanks for listening. <laughs> what an intro! Okay. <laughs> we are going to be covering the basics of what Tiny Craft is all the different things that are broken down as a part of this practice and how you can start incorporating it into your craft today. What is tiny craft? Well, a basic overview and gist of it is the cultivation of your inner child, reconnecting with your inner child like wonder and applying that to your witchcraft. See, when we are children or children in general are the most human of all humans because they are still being programmed, if you will. They are still learning about life and the way they perceive the world is the most unbiased because they are literally us in our natural states. And every single one of us, it does not matter how old or young you are, has an inner child. And this inner child must be validated, must be heard, protected, and nurtured. And if you fail to do so, you will find it express itself in an unbalanced life, if you will. It's really important to remember that this is in no way a childish practice. It's the act of accepting your inner child and accepting the like childlike parts of you or perhaps you never had a childhood because it was very traumatic for you. This is the practice of reconnecting with that part of yourself. So moving forward, what does tiny craft really entail here? Well, one of the biggest focuses of tiny craft, which you might think is kind of strange, being that at, so at face value, tiny craft seems like unicorns and rainbows, right? Wrong. Tiny craft is actually one of the most difficult practices out there because it involves healing from childhood trauma, which is why our first topic of shadow work is such a prevalent part of this practice, particularly shadow work when it comes to childhood trauma or things that may have happened in our childhood that we may have forgotten. I know that for many of us, we really don't remember our childhoods and I am one of these people. I have memories of my childhood peppered in here and there, but for the most part, it really just consists of me trying to do damage control throughout my family. No shade to my family, you know, we all do the best that we can. We all have our own life struggles and at the end of the day, our parents are only human. They are not the gods and the goddesses we see them as growing up. It's kind of reliving those traumas and coming to terms with these traumas and understanding them in a way that maybe is uncomfortable and like looking those shadows in the face and embracing them with love and light and being like, it's okay, I love you anyway. That's a huge part of this practice. If you are struggling with your childhood traumas, I do have a challenge I created within the Hatchling Clan for the Tiny Craft chat room, which if you're interested in learning more about Tiny Craft, you can go ahead and join our chat room. I'll link it down below for you. And this is a challenge called recovering from childhood trauma or just releasing childhood trauma and healing from that. And it goes very in depth into a little guided meditation that you can do to heal from that because again, it is very intense and can be one of extreme exhaustion 
and the re-victimization process or the process of reliving your traumas to either tell them or kind of process them is a very very difficult process that you are not alone. I have included you know all of the like self-help and crisis like lines and information in the description box down below but I have also included um, the chat room, the Hatchling Clan support nest for those of you guys who are struggling as well who may just like need to vent or whatever. That is there for you! How to work for those of you guys who do not know is the act and practice of looking at your shadowy side or looking at your shadow self and or your shadows which are things that are considered not positive or negative or dark like traumas that you may have experienced and bringing them to the light to be processed and to be released, loved, and accepted. And that's pretty much what shadow work is. I also have a video all about shadow work if you are interested in learning about that like more specifically. Moving on, as you can see I have my little unicorn here. This is Lavender and the reason why her name is Lavender, I wanted to name her Periwinkle. The Periwinkle is blue and I realized that it's not a pink years ago but she actually has like lavender inside of her so you like stick her in the microwave and then she smells like lavender and it's really soothing and helps me sleep dude using things like items from your childhood for example plushies or stuffed animals or maybe toys that you had like dolls or like action figures or race cars anything like that would be considered like the childhood like toy childhood relic type of practice so using these in your like your altar for example if you want to like take a look at my altar for a quick minute I have a Bakugan you can't see right here but I have Bakugan on my altar and I'm not sure if I have it on this altar but I have like some Pokemon on some of my altars yeah here we go I have Chansey here on this altar and I also of course have my little pony on this altar this is rarity and I also have Neopets cuz hell yeah Neopets and lastly I have Littlest Pet Shops now these are all parts of my tiny craft experience and connection when I have these things on my altar they remind me of my inner child they they bring my inner child out and when she comes out to play and add her magic to my craft it is it is so raw and powerful. I really do believe that children are the most magical beings on this planet. Like, don't at me. Those are just a few of the different types of, like, things that I identify with from my childhood that I still use in my practice today that are very relevant in my practice today. And when I use these elements in my craft, they bring out that childlike wonder. They help me look at my practice through those, like, childlike wondering eyes. I know that many of us will use stuffed animals almost as if they are a guardian. You can see this in some of the mental health communities, like creators, video people, video, video people, uh huh, they're called YouTubers, etc. <laughs> Using them as like a guardian or as just a way to reach out um, because our inner child are very scared easily and when we're doing things like shadow work, the child that is within us, or our younger selves, is very, very scary. Let's move on into the next part of Tiny Craft, which is dream magic. And what do child, what do children have? Wild, crazy dreams, right? It kind of ties into the next part that we'll cover in a second. But when it comes to stuffed animals, and I mentioned this in my stuffed animals and men mental health video, is using stuffed animals as a way to like comfort ourselves is really really relevant and I also mentioned this in my um, dream shifting versus nightmares video where you charm stuffed animals to protect you in your sleep so a lot of trauma processing is done via nightmares I'm so sorry I know it's the shittiest thing ever but the reality is is that having plushies like this that smell like lavender really help me oh, I could smell forever literally just like help me sleep like actually every single night for like the past two weeks I have had a dream if it has not been a nightmare, it's been a regular dream and they've been so vivid they feel like real life. Sometimes I don't know if they're premonitions, because they're so real, or if my mind is just trying to tell me something, or if I'm trying to process something, they all kind of just together, so <laughs> you never know what this one. When it comes to dream magic, to use your dreamscape as a place to cultivate your reality. That is pretty much what I am talking about when it comes to using dream magic. There are many precautions you can take to, you know, keeping your dreamscape safe, like I mentioned with the charming it to keep you safe, but I use my dreamscape as a place to cultivate my reality, meaning that dreams that I have, I want to say like 
50-50 will come true in real life, you know, unless obviously they're like physically impossible, you know, I can't just like turn into a dragon, hello, hi. Not reality. Reality, <laughs> the real reality is that using this as a place to cultivate your life in real life is just a great way to become the architect of your own reality. Holy shit, that scared me. Hello? Hey, I'm filming a video, do you wanna say hi? <laughs> Oh. Hi. <laughs> Can I call you back? No. <laughs> Do you want to listen to me talk about Tinycraft? Okay, let me listen to you talk about Tinycraft. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no! No, I don't know if I can do that. Okay, fine. i talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye! Basically, it's just using your dreamscape to cultivate your reality in the future. This really ties into having a dream journal, you know, writing down what kind of dreams you want to have and any sort of lucid dreams that you do have. Again, I have a video all about dreams and lucid dreaming if you're more interested in learning about that aspect of tiny craft. All of this will be linked down below because there's so much. This whole dream magic really ties into imagination magic. And what do children have the best thing in the world? Oh, the greatest imaginations that you have ever heard of. Don't, it's not a debate. Children have the most wild, incredible imaginations on the face of the planet. You know, I'm pretty sure if they understood science a little bit better, they would be the ones finding our vaccines. That don't do bad things. That's a controversial statement. Basically what I'm trying to say is when it comes to imagination magic, it's really important to use your imagination in your craft. Are you kidding me? So it does not matter if it's real or fake or fantasy. The point of it is that if you connect to it, it's valid, it's real, it, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't really matter what Suzy Q has to say. It's all about how you feel and how you connect to your practice and yourself and your spirituality. Point blank period. And using your imagination and your craft is really important. For example, many of the times a lot of us are in the broom, broom closet and we cannot, physically cannot actively practice in the physical realm. So what do we do? What's the next best thing? Living in an inner realm, creating that reality, using our imagination to walk ourselves through a ritual. I have a no tools version of all the spells in my book, What the Spell, and that's because imagination is so key. I really do believe that imagination is the seat of all magic when it comes to practicing magic or being a magical practitioner. If you do not have an imagination, what do you have? Yeah. Before we like move on to the next like little category of tiny craft, when it comes to imagination magic, it's about imagining yourself as the most incredible version of yourself. It's about imagining the most magical experience you can. You know, it's about imagining a space and a place in which you can connect to creatures like the unicorn, where you can connect to the gods and goddesses that you resonate with, and most importantly, where you can connect to yourself in a way where you truly believe in yourself. You know, the imagination is key because it's it's tied into visualization mostly, but it's also tied into, you know, how we brainstorm, how we dream, how we experience life, you know? Life without all of that would be so boring, am I right? You know, if we didn't have imagination as humans, we wouldn't have things like a camera where I can like, hello, talk to you at this point in time, and it'd be a portal to any point in time, anytime you click on this. Take a hit for every time I said anytime. The thing is, is like, imagination is so key to the human experience because that's really what sets us apart from other like life forms here on this planet. Our capability of imagination really turns into innovation when we apply willpower to it. You know, when we apply that drive to it. And that's the same thing with your magic too. You know, the more like imaginative you get with how you craft your spells, it's really tied into creativity as well, which is another part of, you know, tiny craft, which is creation magic. And creation magic is essentially the act of creating things from nothing, you know, or creating something from the destruction of something else, you know? It's about, like, for example, all of these are considered creation magic. Using a seed, putting your intentions in the seed, planting that seed in the soil, which have other intentions for that, you know, like perhaps the soil 
is the trauma of your past. It's the darkness. It's all of these shadowy sides of yourself. And you plant this little seed of light of your intention into that. And from the darkness springs forth that plant. And you nurture that plant, thus creating life. Hello, creation magic. Another thing is, for example, crafting a wand or crafting anything in general. You are taking what used to be just a tree branch, probably a tree branch, or you're taking what used to be a lump of clay and you are creating something enchanted with that. Creation magic. Affirmations are honestly creation magic. Why? Because you're creating a new version of yourself. Every time you affirm something about yourself, you are creating that in your reality. You are creating that belief. You are creating that habitual pattern if you do it regularly. Moving forward, there's a, another faction of tiny craft, which is pop culture witchcraft. And that is kind of like tied into when I was showcasing the different like elements off my altar. You saw different things from the universe of My Little Pony, of Pokemon, of Bakugan, of Neopets, and of Littlest Pet Shops. I focus mostly on Pokemon and like My Little Pony when it comes to like what's on my altar specifically, but this also relates to like like video games and media and like how we see like magic being portrayed in pop culture because for me personally if it wasn't for the book series Aragon and that movie Aragon I'm not really quite so sure if I would be so into witchcraft as I am now because I would only read those books like day and night. I wouldn't even pay attention in class because I was reading those books. Literally had my textbook with those books in the center and was like, I'm doing my work, kind of. At least I was reading, okay, and not doing something else. Like the other kids in the back of the classroom. Thing is, is that those, those fantasy realms are valid in your practice. I love to use those fantasy realms as a place to escape to, or as a place to learn lessons from, or the characters specifically in my own spiritual practice. For example, I have had meditations where I talk to Ash Ketchum from Pokemon, where I talk to Naruto from Naruto, where I talk to, you know, different animal villagers from Animal Crossing, why? Because they help me feel better. They help me feel inspired. Or one of my favorites is Natsu from Fairy Tale. Such inspiring characters, right? Or like Urza from Fairy Tale, for example. These characters are so incredibly like all powerful, like magical, like almost untouchable in a way. And when I feel like I am not, I go to these meditations to communicate with these characters to feel like I have that strength. Or when I feel like I'm depressed, I will go have a talk with Natsu and he'll get me all fired up, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's just the way it works in my practice, which is very much like, it's very much pop culture witchcraft, but in that particular sense, it's a part of tiny craft because it's like a very much like um, a trauma response for me personally when I'm coming from a place of fear because I feel small, because I feel like I'm not strong enough. Um, that comes from not feeling safe for, as a child, you know what I mean? Where these characters made me feel safe. They made me feel protected and like I was strong enough. So that's why I go to them when I feel these, these types of ways in my practice. And especially having meditations or journeying to these different like like realms of reality where I can be there and experience that that world, you know, where I can go have my own Pokemon. Like in my dream realm, I have my own Pokemon team that is Pokemon I created, you know, that I use to help me fight my nightmares sometimes. Mostly I do dream shifting to do that, but for the, re for the most part, like I have all these different like lives within these different like fantasy realms why? Because it helps, it brings so much to my life, you know what I mean? And that's a part of tiny craft in my tiny craft like experience. I, mean, I believed it was one other thing, but I should have write it down because I don't remember. Oof. Some other things that could kind of like fall under tiny craft is dance magic, which is the act of dancing to raise magical energy. You see this in many different types of cultures, and for many of us, the only time that we really felt confident enough to dance was as a child, um, but I really do encourage you guys to do more dancing in your craft, as it's a great offering for especially like any mythical creatures like the unicorn. They want to see that improvisational like music or dancing or song. They really love that because it's part of the arts, of course. So using dance Dancing as a way to connect with your inner child is very liberating in the sense that it just allows you to be free. Like how, like move how your childlike self would move. Your childlike self wouldn't give crap what you look like. You would just be like, mm, 
I'm feeling myself. Mm -mm. I'm feeling myself. Say what? I'm feeling myself. I'm like, honestly, look up like babies dancing. It's the cutest, most precious, most wholesome thing you've ever seen. Okay, just. Wow, it's so good. It's pretty much just like the basic gist of a beginning, a beginner's guide to tiny craft. I'm sure there's many more that I missed. So if there's any other types of like crafts that like follow or like practices that fall under tiny craft, I'll make a part two to this video. And if you guys want to learn a little bit more about how each different like category of practice that I mentioned in this video falls under tiny craft, then you can check out my blog post within the Hatchling Clan as it will go all over everything you need to know, plus some tips, tricks, and more fun bits and all of that that uh, are about tiny craft. So it would be awesome to have you there as well because we have a tiny craft chat room if you want to further your discussion or meet other like-minded practitioners that do this craft as well. And as always, there are all the different resources that you need if, you know, reconnecting with your inner child is not the prettiest experience because it isn't for everyone. And for me, it certainly wasn't. So we are here for you, you are not alone. And what is a better time to connect with your inner self and your inner child than while you're isolated at home. Hope you're staying safe and sane out there. If you like this video and want to see more like it, don't forget to leave a like on the video so I will make more like it. And leave a comment down below on what type of like practice that I mentioned within Tiny Craft you do or what types of things you do in your practice that may fall under Tiny Craft or if you yourself practice Tiny Craft and you didn't even know it or if you did know it and any sorts of like tidbits or extra tips that you can give us. We would love to have all of that in the comments down below. But if you love my content and want to see more videos like this in the future, then please consider hitting that blue join button down below this video or on my channel as you will get access to tons of videos and extra perks that you cannot find anywhere else on the internet. And if my channel membership just isn't striking your fancy, the best place to support me is over on Patreon. I have tons of different tiers and price points for any hatchling and budget out there and you wouldn't even believe how much a dollar every single month really helps it maintain the channel and ensures that I can, you know, pay the internet bill, making sure that I have the time to create these videos, etc, etc, because it really does make the difference and helps me ensure that I get all these epic awesome videos out to you guys. And of course, if that is kind of not really your thing, then I also have a book called What the Spell, which is a collection of 13 different spells for my own personal craft that I have rewritten for you, the reader, to practice and go through in order. So by the time that you read through the book and cast all the spells, you will be a master spell caster. There are beginner, intermediate, and advanced levels, so there's a little something for everyone in that book, as well as how to kind of like create your own spells and how to cast a circle and all of that good stuff is just there for you because I get asked that the most. Of course, if you cannot financially support the channel, have no fear because simply just watching the video all the way through, liking, commenting, subscribing, hitting the notification bell, and of course sharing this video with a friend really truly helps the channel more than you could even imagine and makes the YouTube algorithm really happy and more likely to promote my content. So all of that really just is incredible. All of your support means the world to me and I'm always so humbled by how much you guys love to give back to me. All I could ever hope to do is help one person live their life a little better or feel a little less alone and feel more validated. So I hope that this video was able to do that for you. And if, of course, if you have any suggestions on future topics or anything you'd like to see me discuss, as always, the comment section below is open for you. But until next time, a geeky, cheeky, and freaky little hatchling, okay? And don't forget. <laughs> Oh my goodness, but until next time, blessed be and bye. Mwah. And I love you.